A friend of mine was using his almost brand new Red Max backpack blower on a leaf job this past season. Now after using it for about 30 minutes, they put it down for a few minutes but could not get it started after that. They asked me if I could take a look at it and of course I said yes, but what I didn't realize was that this was going to be the biggest challenge I've ever had and to be honest, I almost gave up on it. What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is this Red Max blower and the problem is that after the last time it was turned off, it will not start again. Now this blower has spent almost two years in a box after it was purchased and it was only recently taken out to be used. I'll tell you, I've never used a blower of this caliber before and I really want to get it working again because I want to try it out for myself and decide if I want to purchase one of these. Now, I'm going to try and repair this blower, however, it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. Now, we're only going to mention what these other options could be. We don't have time to look into them, but if you need more information on these options, you're welcome to ask as many questions as you need to. The first thing I want to do is see the problem for myself. You never know, it's been a few days since it didn't start. It might just start working now. So it didn't even try and start. Now I have to wonder if the ignition system has somehow failed, which would be pretty amazing with only a few hours on this engine. The next thing I'm going to do is use my spark checker to see if we still have spark. Now these are very affordable and if you want to get one, there should be a link in the description below the video. Now the spark wasn't very consistent, but there was an orange glow in the tester, so we do have spark. I'm not sure if I had a bad connection on the tester, but an inconsistent spark would cause a starting problem. However, it would also be an issue while it was running, which my friend did not mention, so I'm not going to focus on it just yet. So the spark plug is an NGK, and it looks really good with hardly any carbon buildup on it. It's a bit wet with fuel, but you'd expect that after trying to start it, and it doesn't start. Now it isn't sopping wet, so I don't think it's necessarily flooded, but just to be sure, I'm going to pull the rope several times just to get rid of any extra fuel that might be in the crankcase. Just out of curiosity, I want to make sure that the exhaust isn't being restricted in the muffler. Now the most likely restriction would be a clogged spark arrestor screen, but with it being so new, I don't see how this is even possible. And just as I suspected, the screen isn't clogged and causing our starting problem, so I'll reinstall it and move on to the next possibility. So far, we found out that it has an unrestricted exhaust, spark, and we've given it plenty of fuel, but the engine still won't start. The next thing I want to check is if we have plenty of compression from the engine. Now, I'm going to tell you, after pulling on this rope, this engine is very tight, and I doubt we have a compression issue, but I need to confirm it before I can move on. You don't need to remove the airbox and the intake pipe to do a compression test, but I'm doing it to make it easier to film. So there is a fair amount of fuel in the intake pipe, which is telling me that the engine is either getting too much fuel or it's flooded because we haven't been able to get the engine started after several failed attempts. Now to perform a compression test, you'll need a tester which can be bought online for about $20. If you need one of these, you can find a link in the description of this video. Now for the compression test, I want to see a reading close to 150 PSI and I don't want to see anything below 50 because it would mean we have a serious problem. So the reading is 135 PSI, which is pretty good, but to be honest, I thought it'd be just a little bit higher than that. The problem though is that it shows that there isn't a compression issue with this engine, so we still don't have any idea as to why it won't start. The next step is to remove the carb for an inspection. I really don't expect to find anything, but I'm running out of ideas as to why this engine isn't starting. Now once we've gone through this carb, there are only a few other issues that it could possibly be, so you never know, I might go through every possible cause and not have anything to mention at the end of this video as far as other possible options to the problem. 
After taking the carb apart and getting to the metering diaphragm, we can see that it's still very flexible and without any wrinkles, so it's in perfect working condition. The next part to be removed is the pumping section, which also reveals the pumping diaphragm. And I hate to say it, but everything looks clean, and I don't see any debris in the inlet screen, which tells me that the filter is still on the fuel line inside the fuel tank. Now, the part of the diaphragm that moves with the engine pulses is also flexible, so it should be getting fuel from the tank as well. Next, I'm going to remove the diaphragm so I can see if the check valve flaps will sit flat against the pumping section. And it looks like they're sealing really well against it, so I don't think that's our problem either. Next, I'm going to take a look under the metering diaphragm just to see if there's anything wrong with it. And yet again, I don't see anything wrong here either. At this point, I'm getting really flustered because I can't find anything wrong. The reason is, normally I wouldn't have to go through all these steps to find out what the problem is. Like I mentioned, this blower is going to give me a run for my money when it comes to figuring out what the problem really is. Now because I didn't see any issues with this basically brand new carb with literally only a few hours on it, I'm just going to put it back together. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't function as it should and I think that's the real problem here. I think it's sending more than enough fuel to the engine but it could be flooding it as there seems to be fuel all over the place inside the intake system. It would also make sense that there's probably too much fuel inside the crankcase as well. At this point, I'm going to check everything that I can, starting by removing the muffler to take a look at the rings and see if there's anything wrong. I know the compression is good, so they should be in great shape, but I'm running out of ideas here. And just as I suspected, the piston rings look absolutely fine. There's no gouging, scoring, or any sort of damage to it. That means out of the five things I've checked so far, I haven't found anything concerning. Now it seems we have everything needed for a working engine, but it still won't start. What that means is we might have to start focusing on different aspects of the things we've already confirmed. Now we know we have spark, but what if it wasn't happening when it was supposed to? Now this would only happen if the flywheel key was sheared, so the next thing we need to look at is the flywheel. Now before I remove the flywheel, this would be a great opportunity to use a drill to try to dry the engine out if it was flooded, and then we could use the drill to try and start it as well. Now after spinning the engine over for a few seconds, we can see some fuel did come out of the exhaust port and all over the blower housing, but it wasn't as much as I was expecting. The next thing to do is to put some fuel into the spark plug hole, replace the plug and try starting it again. I'm going to put it on the top of the engine first, just in case there's still plenty left inside the crankcase. Unfortunately, it didn't start, so this time, I'm going to put fuel into the intake on the engine where the carb would be. Unfortunately, it still didn't start, even after using the drill to dry the engine out and then using it to try and start it. The next thing I want to check is the air gap between the flywheel magnet and the ignition coil. To do that, I'm going to use my feeler gauges. Now, the shim I'm using is a ten thousandths of an inch shim, and it should slide between them. I should be able to slide it around with some drag on it. Now it is sliding around, but because of the shape of the flywheel and the coil, it's hard to feel what kind of drag I'm getting. For something like this, I like using a business card instead because you can follow the shape of the flywheel better. Now the card is around 14 thousandths of an inch, but it should still work. It is sliding around, and it feels like the gap is bigger than the business card, so we might have to adjust it later on. Now to get to the key, we need to remove the nut holding the flywheel to the crankshaft, but once it's gone, we can't simply pull it away from the engine. Instead, we'll need to use some sort of a puller. I don't think any of my claw pullers will work on this one, so I'm going to use my steering wheel puller instead. If you don't have one of these, you can get a loaner from the auto parts store, otherwise these are also very affordable online for less than $20. Once the smaller bolts are threaded into the flywheel, I can now install the larger bolt that will push against the crankshaft and force the flywheel off of it. Now you don't need to use an impact, but it's a lot easier this way. So here's the back of the flywheel, and as you can see, this is where the key would slide into it. Now the slot for it is empty because the key is still in the crankshaft. But as we take a look at it, we can see it's not damaged in any way, and it looks to be in perfect condition. We can also see the rear main seal is not leaking either, otherwise there would be oil all over the place, but there's not. 
Now, I'm at a total loss as to what the problem could be, so I'm going to take a step back and inspect the spark plug's condition. But as you can see, it looks to be fine as well, with very little carbon buildup. If I measure the spark plug gap, it looks to be around 20 thousandths of an inch, which is a bit smaller than I like, but I don't see this as a likely issue because it's only a few thousandths smaller than I like it to be. If all else fails, I'll just replace the plug later on if it doesn't start. Now at this point, I don't think it's a fuel related issue, but an ignition issue, specifically its quality. What I'm going to do is reinstall the flywheel so I can reset the air gap between the coil and the magnets on the flywheel. Now I wasn't able to get a good reading on what the gap was set at, I just know it's more than the thickness of a business card. So to reset the air gap, I'm going to remove the coil, which you don't need to do, but I'm going to do it for filming purposes. Then I'll replace the business card over the magnets and then install the coil over it. That way the air gap will be the thickness of the business card, which is around 14 thousandths of an inch. Then I'll check to see what the spark looks like. So it looks like there's plenty of spark and it's unfortunate that I didn't test it using this method earlier, that way we could have compared if there was any improvements after adjusting the air gap. The next thing I want to do is see if the engine will start now. You don't even know how relieved I am to hear this engine finally come to life. I didn't even mind that it hurt my ears, I'm just happy to know that it's finally starting. Now I don't know how long I've been diagnosing this engine for, but this one has to be the winner when it comes to the most diagnostic work I've done on any one piece of equipment. So I don't know if the only problem was the air gap between the coil and the flywheel or if it was a combination of other issues. We don't know exactly what happened to this blower, we'll just have to wait and see if it happens again. Now I know I didn't pour out the fuel in the tank to inspect it like I normally would and I have a pretty good reason why. The person who owns this blower is very competent when it comes to using a lot of equipment so to me the fuel wasn't even a factor. But if you have any doubts about the condition of the fuel in the tank, pour it out and make sure it does smell like fresh gasoline and that there's no water in it. When someone brings me a blower and it looks this new and then proceeds to tell me that it ran for about 15 or 20 minutes before stopping, I would guess that the problem was fuel related, specifically that it had very little or possibly even no two cycle oil in it. I would have tried to start it and confirmed that the rope was very easy to pull, check for spark and then I would have seen that there was spark and then performed a compression test only to discover the bad news. Now this one had me go down the entire checklist of major reasons and minor ones as to why this engine wouldn't start. However, this video isn't over just yet and it's not done giving me a hard time either. And I hate to say it, but I'm going to remember this blower for quite some time. So of course it didn't start and I hate to tell you the reason why, it turns out the engine is yet again flooded. In fact I tried a couple of times after this one and it still didn't start. I had to dry the engine out again and then wait till the next day to try it again. This time I slightly modified the starting procedure and got a different result.
So what exactly happened? Well, it turns out this engine has an extreme tendency to flood. To get around this, I modified how I started the blower. The first couple pulls, I didn't choke it because those pulls were meant to clear any fuel that might be in the engine. Then I choked it, but I was only going to pull it three times, but luckily it tried to start for less than a second on the third pull. I then partially choked it, and luckily it started. After filming, I confirmed this method worked each and every time I tried it. So what's supposed to happen is, while fully choked, the engine is supposed to try and start but die. You then move the choke lever to half choke and that's when it actually starts. You then move the lever to run after it warms up a little bit. But this engine was flooding so badly that it didn't even try and start at all. Now I know I didn't move the choke lever to half choke while I was starting it on camera at the beginning of the video, but that's because I already knew it was flooded. However, I did use that method off camera on my preliminary diagnostic and it still didn't work then either. So another option as to why this engine wasn't starting was that the front seal had come loose and causing a massive air leak in the engine. The fix would have been to try and reseat the seal, which on this blower is very hard to do. So my question is, would you try and figure out why this engine is flooding on startup or would you just leave it alone and just slightly modify the way you start it? Personally for me, as long as I know how to start it, I'm not going to look any further than that. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.